So my name is Philip, Man <coughs> Philip Manicucci, and I graduated from Highland. I love this school. I graduated from here in 1976, and I was in the Woods class, which is just right behind us over there, the old Industrial Arts Building. And I don't have any college, but I got out from Woods class and I started working. I started my own business in 1984 and have been doing it ever since. Um, I think that some of the people here today talking to you from some of the con construction companies, construction is a great opportunity. You don't need college, you don't need all the college debt. Building things, for me, building furniture and building cabinets is a really nice thing to do and like it. So all I can say is Highland is a great school. I'm glad that you guys came and I'll turn it over to whoever's next. That would be me. Good morning. My name's Joey Atencio. I'm the business manager for the Labor's International Union of North America, Bolt 16. Cover jurisdiction as covers all of New Mexico, 11 counties around El Paso, and the entire Navajo Reservation. The topic I want to cover today is that the misconception that construction jobs are a dead end. They're not a dead end. There's a lot of room for advancement. I started out as a construction laborer back in 87. I didn't have a choice. 15 years old, my father was, got hurt at work. They dropped a pipe on him. I had to go to work to help support my family. I dropped out of high school. No education, no high school diploma. Started at the bottom, worked power plants for a while, and then I got in working with James Corporation. From there, I learned that attitude has a lot to do with how you move up in the industry. If you're willing to learn, you listen, they'll give you the opportunities. When I worked for James, they gave me an opportunity to move all the way up from labor, all up, almost all the way up to a superintendent. I started their program. Other opportunities came up. But in construction industry, there's lots of room for advancement. You start off as a laborer. You can go to the other trades, plumbers, electricians, carpenters. A lot of people look down on construction workers. The one thing to it is that you've got to understand is we're one of the most important assets to the construction industry. Because without the construction worker, we wouldn't have anything. Who builds everything? The construction workers. We build everything. We build these schools. We build the roads. Without us, they wouldn't have them. We wouldn't have the grocery stores. We wouldn't have the schools. We wouldn't have the roads. We're a very important part of society. I'm glad there's a lot of ladies in here. Construction isn't just for men. We have a lot of ladies. I have probably a little over 300 ladies working in Los Alamos for labs, from custodial to construction work. I think we've got 30 ladies working at Facebook right now. So we have a lot of opportunity for women. You can make a good living, a very good living. Like I said, I, I started off with no high school diploma. Dropped out of high school, went to work. When it came that time, I had a choice. My dad sent me to the union to get signed up, and from there I've been with them for next year. Uh, actually, this year, I'm on my 36th year. I've made a good living, good benefits. Um, being a laborer isn't for everybody. You get in, you try it, it may not be for you, but there's other trades. The electrical trades, mechanical trades, all different trades out there. Truck drivers, you name it. Yes, sir? Is there an openings for welding? There's openings for welders. Um, you got the uh, plumbers who use a lot of welders, the sheet metal workers use welders, the iron workers use welders. It just depends on what industry you're looking at, what type of welding you're looking at. You've got pipe welding for the pipelines. You've got welding that the plumbers do for gas lines, uh, breathing gas, stuff like that, specialty stuff. So it just depends on what you're looking at for welding. Uh, structural, that'd be with the iron workers. So it just depends on what it is you're, you're looking at going into. Um, but there is room for advancement. You can start off as a laborer. Like I said, I started off as a laborer and I worked my way up to being a superintendent. I ran jobs out at San Diego National Labs for MB Industries. Worked for Summit Construction as a, as a uh, general foreman and foreman. So 
there's always room to move up. With James, one of the stories I always tell is the guy that runs James Corporation now, Greg Krause, started out as an apprentice laborer under me. We started working. They brought him straight off the farm, didn't know anything. He worked his way up through the company and now he's the main guy there's James Corporation, Drain Structures. This is a guy that started out as a laborer. So don't, don't let anybody tell you what's out there for you. Make up your mind what you want to do and achieve that goal. Don't let anybody hold you back. When you set your mind for it, go do it. You guys have any questions for me? I'm not exactly sure where to stand. Uh, hi guys, my name is Victoria Burund. I work for B&D Industries as a project coordinator. If you were to ask me at your age what I'd be doing, I would give you a blank stare and kind of just chuckle. Um, <laughs> I went to Albuquerque High School for my freshman year and then I moved to ACE Leadership and that's where I graduated. Um, from graduation, I took my first internship with AGC New Mexico and at this point I was just looking for experience. I was not looking for a career. Um, I did not want to go into construction because it was unknown to me. Nobody in my family worked in construction and I didn't feel like there was a place for me as a woman in construction. Luckily, I had a woman as my mentor, Kelly. I saw her take the industry by storm and I watched in awe of her every day. I went on uh, soon after my graduation to work for Facebook. Funny story, I got a call from my advisor. I was four months into a job that I really didn't like and I, was, I had no idea where I was going. I wasn't going to college. He said, what are you doing? Where are you? And I said, um, I'm working at, as a front desk for, for this hospital. I don't really like it. He said, I got you an inter interview for Facebook. Send me your resume. I'm going to look it over for you. That was the connection I made when I was 16 years old with one of my teachers, and he got me a good job. These teachers, everyone in this building wants to see you succeed. You just have to ask for the right tools. Um, I saw some of my number one supporters from my high school, and they're still my number one reference on every job that I get. From Facebook, I went to B&D where I am now. My first supervisor there was Jamie Westerfield. She was another woman I had the honor to work under. She is so incredibly intelligent. She did her job with confidence, and she gave me the confidence to go into where I am now. I'm a project coordinator for B&D. I work under Kenny Easley. He's a man that works on peer youth and caffeine. He's in his 60s and it's hard to keep up with him sometimes. So he is teaching me the ins and outs of my industry and I am so blessed to sit under him and learn under him. Um, he's been in the industry longer than I've been alive. And now I see where I'm going and I'm excited to move into becoming a project manager and I wouldn't have been able to do it if it wasn't for my high school teachers and for my administration and asking those questions that I didn't want to ask. When I went to my parents and I said, I want to be in construction, they gave me this look of pure worry. Like I just said I was pregnant or something. <laughs> and they um, said, Miha, you're so smart. You could do anything. There's no money in these jobs. And I wasn't going to argue my point because I knew that the smartest people I had ever met were during my time working in construction. So I just knew I was going to prove them wrong. Um, they came to realize this, this is a multi-billion dollar industry. This is a multi-million dollar campus we're standing on right now. So there is money for in this, and there is a place for you in this. You just have to ask the right questions and meet the right people. The connections you are making today will matter tomorrow. So let me know if you have any questions for me. All right, thank you guys. <laughs> One thing to remember, something that Tori just said, the connections you're making today will last for tomorrow. You may not be maybe that enthused here today, but there's something from here today that I think we all can grasp. And if I can get a show of hands, how many of you all have family members that you know work in construction? I think probably all of you have a family member, right? I grew up uh, in a small town in northern New Mexico. My father. Um, started his own business. He started his own business because he started working under an, an apprenticeship with a, a cabinet maker in, in town. He started his own cabinet shop out of nothing. Uh, my father did not have a college degree. He just decided, hey, I'm gonna get out here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a career. 
out of this skill that I learned being a carpenter, and he built his own cabinet shop. I get I got to work with him um, since I was young, so I got to work with my dad day in and day out. I got to work with my hands. I got started getting excited with being creative and building. And um, as I got older into high school, I wound up getting um, side jobs that my dad would advertise for me, and I started working for other customers and trying to get my own my own business going. Um, I went ahead and and um, came over to UNM. I always had that that feeling to want to be in construction. I think it's pretty interesting when you walk, when you drive across I-40 or I-25 and you see those cranes up. Doesn't that make you feel kind of exciting? Kind of excited a little bit? Well, none of that work that happens, happens without strong people that have actually a career mindset going on. As I, as I started going through my, my college career at UNM, I finished my degree in construction engineering. And I started off as a, as um, a superintendent, I had spent my summers in framing for, for contractors here locally, and I knew construction was going to be um, the area that I wanted to focus on. The number one thing that I've learned, especially when I came into Jane's, right now I am um, the director of South Perform Operations at Jane's Corporation. I oversee our architectural casework and millwork operation and our concrete operation. We have about probably 100 to 150 skilled laborers that fall under my umbrella. We got laborers, carpenters, finished carpenters, concrete foremen, concrete setters, operators. Um, there's so many um, opportunities in the trade and the skill. And I think somebody said there's advice out there that was given to them. There's nothing out there. Construction's kind of a dead end. Our, our, our carpenters and our laborers have built strong careers with us. We got people right now at Jane's that have been in the company for 35 40 years, they're able to raise a family. Um, all our um, laborers, carpenters, operators that work under James, James Corporation, James Structures are all under the unions, just like Joey Atencio here. He's he's um, business agent for the laborers. Um, each of these of these employed union laborers have, are working for retirement. They're getting a pension. They have a health care plan. They can have a dental plan for their family. There's a future to provide for their family. You can move up in the company. Um, you can move into different other positions. You can be a superintendent. You can be. You can come into the position I am. You can be the CEO of the company. Um, and number one, you could say you're proud of building something. You're proud to see something come out of the ground, and to keep that moving. Um, I had that aspiration in high school. I knew I was going to be involved in construction. Some of us may not have um, that resource. Or those people in front of me, like I had growing up. But keep an eye out. There's going to be a big ramp up and a need for, for those in the skilled labor. But it's not a dead end. And there's always going to be an opportunity. You can start your own job, your own business if you wanted to from scratch. Or you can come on board with any of these contractors that we're talking about. And trust me, there's a big future there. There is a big future. You can build yourself up, your family all together. And you can, you can do a lot for yourself and for the generations to come. The one of the biggest things that drives me every day is to see those under me or those that with me that work in the field, they're putting up concrete forms, they're digging footings, they're proud to be there and they're happy to see the work get done and they're happy to see that what they're doing helps provide for the community and it helps provide a future and a foundation for the city, the country, the state and all around. So there's so much anybody can do. So be thinking about it. If you haven't thought about construction or anything in that industry and that you're coming up to your higher levels in high school, Think about it, because there's a lot of opportunity there. And um, don't let that kind of escape your mind, especially when you drive down the road and you see that crane, right? Think about those that are putting that crane up, those that are providing for their families and building a future. A question. question, yeah? Yeah, what do your laborers start out an hour? Uh, right now, labor apprentice is somewhere around 14 to 15. 14 now. starts off, first period apprenticeship starts off at $14 an hour plus benefits. And then every six months they get an increase. It's a two year program for the laborers. So after two years they become a journeyman and they get journeyman's wages, which is right now anywhere from eighteen seventy five an hour to twenty two fifty an hour, based on their skills and what they got. Another good um, thing to tap onto that, that's a good question, is through through the skilled labor trades and the unions that we that we go through, you get professional training. So if you start off in labor, you move in the apprenticeship and the carpenters, you go into a training by professionals. So you get to learn skills of the trade, you also advance. 
So you do get increases in wages as you go. I think a drainer carpenter right now is making about twenty, just under twenty. Yeah, they take you now. under their wing and show you how to yep. do whatever you guys do. The, yep. the nice thing about it is going through an apprenticeship program is you're learning the trade, and after four years, four to six years, depending on the trade you go into, when you get out, you got a career, and you have no debt because you're paid as you go to school. You're paid while you're taking your trainings. You have no college debt. You don't have any debt there. You're paid for while you get trained. And so you're getting your training and you're getting paid for it. And do you receive like certificates that- Yeah, we, you, we do a certificate of completion. That you've completed yeah. whatever it is that you need? Yes. Okay. Now that hasn't happened unfortunately in the last two years because of COVID. We can't bring everybody together. But well, prior to COVID being here, we used to have a, a little ceremony. We'd get together with them and bring them in front of the membership and introduce them as a new journeyman. And then they go from there. And then with, um, on the daily basis and the carpenters, the crews are assigned and set up in a way to where you have a foreman and journeyman that are skilled, that are bringing up the apprentices and training them as well. So the job site every day is a training ground to grow as well. I've got a couple of laborers in my mind right now that started out right out of high school and they're doing great and they're growing, they're learning, everybody wants to use them on the project, they're they're running, they're driving a forklift, they're using equipment, they're 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 advancing. So every and, time you use something like a forklift, you, you get certified, you yes. get certified. Because training. you're not just gonna let somebody use something, right? No. Gotta, the okay. the training programs that we have set up are uh, we have a vast array of trainings that they can get from regular safety training to skills training. Um, we actually require the laborers, through the labor union, we require every year an eight hour upgrade training. So that's either scaffold building, combined space. Um, this year we're doing combined, combined space entry permits. So teaching them how to go into combined space and all of that and they get a certificate at the end. Well, it's just safety involved. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, CPR, first aid, right. certifications, and all yeah. those. So. And, and they get all the basic trainings, safety trainings during the apprenticeship programs, and then once they become a journeyman, they start getting the advanced trainings, forklifts, bobcats, um, different equipment that we use. Uh, one of the one things I didn't say that I'd like to, for you guys to understand real quick, the decisions you guys make today or in the next few years can affect your life for the rest of your life. DWIs, arrests, domestic violences, stuff like that, in trouble with the law, can affect your job for the rest of your life and how you're gonna make a living. Start getting in trouble with the law and your opportunities start getting diminished. So remember that as you guys are, are getting older, you're getting close to getting out of high school. Decisions you make today in life could affect you later on in life, on on your ability to make a good living and make good wages. Plus, it stops your progress advancing into the field. Yes, and contractors and companies are hungry. Wow. Every there, if there anybody with talent, anybody that's got some energy, and wants to show up, and willing to learn, even if they don't have the skill, it, contractors are dying to have. And it, all it is is attitude. Yep. Showing up on time. Yep. Have, having a good attitude. Having an attitude that nobody can tell me what my future is going to be. I'm going to make what I'm going to make of myself. And being on time. Oh, yeah. Being on time, showing up. But that attitude of I'm going to be something and sticking with it. Don't let anybody bring you down. <clears throat> hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Aaron Stricker. I'm a superintendent with Bradbury Stam Construction. Um, I really wanted to just sort of follow up on what you guys were talking about. You know, I remember when I was a junior or senior in high school, I didn't really want to know what I wanted to do. People are always asking you, hey, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What are you doing next year? And I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I went to college because it was sort of a way to just do something, get my parents off my back and say that I'm, you know, I'm making something of myself. Uh, I'm not going to tell you guys that college is a waste of time, but I studied philosophy. Don't, don't do that. Philosophy is a waste of time. <laughs> Anyways, I, I got out of school, you know, I'm 22, 23 years old, and I, I found I was right back in the same place I was four or five years ago. I was sitting there at my house. I was wondering, what am I going to do? People are asking me, what are you going to do? And I wasn't really sure. 
Um, my brother got a summer job in construction. He came and told me, he said, hey, we're having fun out there. We're working, we're tearing this house down, we're gonna rebuild it, do you wanna give it a try? I didn't have anything going on that summer, so I said, okay. And that was my first construction job. I was 23 years old. I never swung a hammer before. I wasn't really handy. My uncle wasn't a, a carpenter or a framer. I was just fresh in the industry. And I found I really liked it. It, it, was, it was fun, it was interesting. You get to work with the team. The, the money was pretty good. I, I have to say, there's, there's good jobs out there. And it, it really hooked me. Um, you know, I, I started at the bottom. I was moving trash, I was sweeping floors, but you know, every week, every month that came by, I learned how to use a tape measure, I learned how to use a saw, I learned how to pour concrete, I learned how to use a forklift. It, it was really exciting. It was, a, it was a really fun time in my life because everything was new. You got to work on new jobs. You got to, you got to advance. And I found, found myself thinking, I could have just cut the last four years and I should have just gone out of high school and gone straight into construction. That was what, what I came away with. Um, you know, uh, Joey and Andrew were talking about advancement. You know, I started out as a laborer. I became a carpenter. Um, after I became a carpenter, I became a foreman where I had a crew of guys working for me. After that, I became a superintendent, which is what I do now. And now I get to manage entire projects. Um, the job I'm working on now, um, Andrew, you were talking about uh, you're, you're building the big hospital by the freeway there. You guys have seen that on I-40 in Central or I-25 I in Central, the big crane. Those are Andrew's guys that are working on that project. That's like the biggest thing going in the state right now. I mean, there's there's cool things we get to do. Uh, the project that I'm doing right now, I'm building the uh, biopark, the Zoo Asia exhibit. That's sea eagles, tigers, snow leopards, orangutans, siamangs, their homes, their habitats. We've got these bridges that the animals can walk on. The people are going to be there. Uh, th these are the, the kind of projects that I dreamed about when I was younger. and. I guess, like Joey was saying, you apply yourself, you stick with it, you show up, you have a good attitude. Uh, really, the sky's the limit. You know, you can you can make of it whatever you want to. Um, you know, it's it's not it's not an easy job. It's dirty sometimes. You get tired. You're usually working outside, so if it's cold, you're cold. If it's hot, you're hot. But you know, I think back to some of the jobs I did in high school. You're watching the clock, you're like, it's 1.30, there's still two hours to the end of the day. It's 11, there's still 30 minutes till lunch. I, I found I wasn't doing that. The day was exciting, there's always a task. You like the people that you're working with and the day goes, goes by quick. Um, I guess the, the last thing I'll leave you guys with is, um, we're here because we want you to work in our business. <laughs> we want you guys to be working with us next year or the year after. We want to be working with you guys in 20 and 30 years. Um, there's, there's careers out there. There's a labor shortage in construction. There's not enough people to fill these jobs. If you want to work in our business, you can work in our business. If you want a career in our business, you can support your family in our business. Um, the further and further we go in time, the less and less people want to do what we do and the more valuable you're gonna be. Um, you can work anywhere in the country, you can work anywhere in the world, you learn these skills and you take them with you and you can make a great life for yourself. So I'm, I'm happy in construction, I'm excited. I know everybody here is. Um, Tori, I'm really glad you talked about women in construction. Bradbury Stam is the largest woman owned business in the state of New Mexico. So my boss is a woman, half our project managers are women. Um, Tori, that's, that's what you do, project coordination and project management. There's, there's jobs in the office, there's jobs in the field, there's jobs in between. Um, there's, there's really a spot for anybody in construction. Thanks, guys. And um, for just to, like, how long, because I know for a while it mm -hmm. was similar to the tech industry. Yeah. There has been a, a long, for a couple of years now, a void in the trade industry. Yep, absolutely. And so you guys will be looking for people for the next, uh, we, I would assume, at least a decade, right? We've been looking for people for the last five years. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting worse and worse it every is. year. It is. And, um, you know, guys, they're going to they're gonna keep building schools. They're going to keep building zoos. They're going to keep building houses. I mean, there's, there's, there's a business here that's not going away. As long as we need places to live and places to work, there's, there's things to build. We, uh, what's the entry level requirements? Maybe I missed that. But mm -hmm. What's the very entry level requirement for a laborer? 
uh, high school diploma or GED and a driver's license, valid driver's license, and pass the drug test. That's the only three requirements that we have. After that, it's opportunity. What are some of the wages for like a plumber or an electrician? If you're working out at a place like Facebook, if you're journeying at a Facebook and Intel, where are those guys at? It's all over the board right now because there's such a high demand. Um, they're about, I think they generally run about in the 30s, $30 in, to $35. Right now, there's such a demand, uh, like Los Alamos, they just, for the plumbers and electricians, they gave them a $10 an hour incentive to bring in more people because they got jobs. Um, I currently, through the labor union, I've got 45 openings in Los Alamos for labor stuff. It's a little more difficult to fill those jobs because of the background checks. That's what I was telling you guys earlier. Your background affects your your ability to make good jobs uh, or to have a good job, uh, especially in that area, northern New Mexico. Los Alamos is a small community, and all the smaller communities. Um, I probably have 150 guys on my out of work list, but because of their backgrounds and their history behind them, they can't qualify to work at the labs. So, Joey, you're starting out right around fifteen dollars an hour, just no experience. No experience, right 15, right, uh, fourteen dollars, so, and then they start moving up from there. Every six months, they get an increase, and then they get up to the journeyman rate, which is right now eighteen seventy-five. Mm -hmm. And then, as they get additional training, forklift training, hazardous waste uh, remediation, uh, radiation cleanup, all the different things, concrete finishing, concrete stuff like that, then they start getting higher in their their pay. So there's there's a whole range of guys, you know, uh, starting out 14, 15 dozen dollars an hour, you know, maybe I'll work at Walmart instead. But in a couple of years, you're up to 18, 19 dollars an hour. On my job right now, laborers are making 20 dollars an hour, so 40 thousand dollars a year. Within four years from being a laborer, you can become a carpenter. My carpenters are making 30 dollars an hour right now. That's 60 thousand dollars a year. Uh, plumbers, electricians, some of the really skilled trades, those guys are making 35, 40, some of them $50, $50 an hour. You could easily get up as a, as a plumber or an electrician, you could be making $100,000 a year. It's, it's not crazy, it, it sounds kind of crazy, um, but it, it's, it's not crazy. So there's, there's a whole range of different jobs and really you can go sort of as high as you want and you can sort of say, where do I want to be when I'm 40? How much money do I want to make? And you can pick a career that'll that'll get you there as long as you keep showing up and and, and staying on it. With the health care, mm -hmm. and, and retirement. With that, I can tell you guys, I, I stayed as a laborer when I got into the labor shooting. Next year will be 37 years for me. I plan on retiring in June of next year at 55 years old with a pension that I, I'm going to be able to live on for the rest of my life. They're gonna send me a pension check every month. I was able to raise my family. I got two boys that are college educated. My youngest son became a nurse. My oldest son decided to go into wildlife biology and ecology. He wants to be a game warden. Unfortunately, in construction, we're our own worst enemies. We, we pushed our own children to go to college and not work as hard as we did. And now we're all faced with the same situation. We're short workers but you can make a good living, a very good living. I'm very proud of what I've done. Um, when I drive around town and stuff and I got my grandson with me, he's always asking me, Grandpa, did you work on that building? And then I can tell him about what we did from the ground up. It's, it's actually something I kind of, I take pride in. When I drive around, I can look and think to myself, I built that building. I worked on that building. Some of the greatest, the best places that I worked was for Summit at uh, the National Labs, San Diego. A lot of those buildings out there I worked on. Those are things that are important to our society and to our national security. But there's opportunities out there for every one of you. You don't have to go to college. There's, there's an opportunity out there for you to make a good living and take care of your family. The health care that we get is family coverage. So as you working, that coverage covers your entire family, and it's at no cost to you. Doesn't they don't take it out of your paycheck? It's covered for you. It's medical and dental, plus a retirement.
college is not for everybody. It's not. Uh, you know, in my family, my I've got a sister that's in construction. She's a scale master for Lafarge. And I've got a little sister that went to school for dental assistant. But my baby sister, she was my father was a construction laborer, lived labor she 50, 55 years this year, retired. Um, was able to put my little sister through college. She's an attorney. So we all took different paths in our lives growing up, but we were able to have a good life. I can tell you, do you have everything you want in construction? No, you're not gonna make enough money to have everything you want, but you gotta make enough to have everything you need. Put a roof over your head, food on the table, take care of your family, meet your medical benefits, and in the end, you have a pension to retire on and be able to enjoy life. So I got permission to ask you guys, but would any of you ever be interested in getting on a backhoe, driving a backhoe, actually working a piece of heavy equipment? Just to show of hands, would anybody be interested in that kind of opportunity? <laughs> yeah? So at the end of September, you're all invited, because you're here today, to go to Ace Leadership High School for a heavy equipment rodeo. You get to get on the pieces of equipment, learn about it, drive it, see if you like it, because like you've heard today, there's so, so many opportunities. So I know that your period is kind of coming to an end, and I just, thanks for taking the time to even be here and listen. And hopefully when you drive by a hospital, you're in a hospital, you'll look at your school differently because these are all craftsmen that, that build everything around you. So, thanks for your time today, guys. I used to, tell, I used to teach woodworking for 20, 22 years, okay? A woodworking teacher. And I used to tell the kids that Computers are fine, they can draw everything out, but they cannot build buildings. Men and women build buildings. Always remember that. Always. One, one piece of advice I'll give you, and it served me well all my life, and it's something my grandfather taught me, is never just learn one thing only. You get into construction, if you only learn how to do the one thing, that's, that's your career. If you keep your eyes open, your ears open, and you learn as you go, you get other opportunities, you take those opportunities. If you get into construction, you only know how to do one thing. When that one thing is done, they, they lay you off and you move on to the next job. But if you learn a vast variety of things on the job, you stay there longer. For me, when I got into construction, that's what my grandfather taught me, and I learned different things on the job site. So as a journeyman laborer myself, I can go out on the job site and I can do labor's work. I can dig a ditch. I can help pour concrete. I can finish the concrete. I can even run the backhoe. I was given an opportunity to learn how to run the backhoe. I was given an opportunity to learn how to drive a big truck. I got a CDL license. But I took all those opportunities and learned from them, which made me more employable. So when I go to work for a general contractor, whether it's James or it's Summit, any of them, I don't face the layoff at the end when things are getting done because they're keeping you to move you to the next job because you're a valuable asset to the company. So you can, your attitude is what's gonna dictate where you go in life. Um, and, and I'll tell you, I've got people in my union that just got the attitude of, all I'm gonna do is sweep and push a broom, dig a ditch, and they don't move anywhere. That's where they stay. And then I got other guys that Hey, I'm going to run this job. And within a few years, they're superintendents. They're, they're running work. But it's all about attitude. And I think you were the one that was saying about showing up on time. Yeah. That's one of the biggest things out in construction. If you are late, contractors don't really want to, they kind of shy away from you. They don't want to keep you. They want guys that are going to be there every day on time. I always used to show up probably 30 minutes early just to be ready to go to work. And don't show up hungover. That doesn't go these days. Back in the day, that was common. Guys party all night, show up to work the next day. But in our industry, it's very dangerous. And if you're not on your game, you're 100% paying attention, you could get hurt. And I, I used to run jobs as a superintendent, and I used to send them, go on, I don't want you here. You lost work. You lost your pay for the day. I don't want you here. You come back tomorrow sober. Because if not, then you're not you're not working for me no more. 
you're I've said the same way for guys that were late. And a safety risk yeah. to me and other people. That's And that's the biggest thing about the, the showing up hungover or stuff like that is you're not in, only endangering yourself, you're endangering your coworkers. If we, you don't feel 100%, then don't come in. Don't, don't take somebody else out that is innocent. So, Tori, you were here two years ago, two, three years ago now, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, any last words besides maybe if you're thinking about what you want to do after high school other than talk to a counselor? Um, just look at your options, especially as a girl. Um, don't be scared to ask questions. Every adult has an answer for you, and um, they want to see you succeed.